Good morning everybody, I hope you're well. This is gonna be a really good video, so stick around. What I wanna do is take this Tesla Model Y, long range of mine here, and drive it from a 100% fully brimmed battery down to nothing. I've got a warning, vehicle shutting down, pull over safely, I'm gonna try and make it down the hill. And then I'm gonna recharge it back to 100% again. And there's four key data facts I wanna get off of this. One, real world range. I mean, 100% to nothing. And we often pro rata, we've used 90% and covered this many miles, but how many miles is this car really gonna do real world? Fully 100% to nothing. Then what happens when the car gets to 0%? We'll find out. And then we're gonna plug it in and recharge it. How long does it take to recharge? And then lastly, we're gonna be able to see how much electricity has been added to the car, what the capacity of the battery is when we fully brim it back up to 100%. It will tell us how much it's added. Uh, because Tesla never give us actually the, you know, the data about the battery, you know, what is the usable capacity of this? We don't know. So that's exactly what we're gonna find out today. And then just for a point of comparison, we're also gonna do it in our Model 3 long range as well. So would a Model Y have an equal range to the Model 3, even though it's bigger? We think it's probably got a slightly bigger battery. But as I say, we don't really know. So that's what we're going to find out in this video. Okay, these are two really similar cars. So what have we got? Uh, this car here was new here in February 2022 and has covered about 3,200 miles as I speak right now. I do have the 20 inch wheel upgrade option. So the slightly bigger wheels, slightly less efficient probably than the 19 inch wheels. We'll do some testing on that another day exactly. Um, but it's a long range and it's very comparable to our Model 3 over there, which is also a long range. However, that car, it's uh, still the current model. It's a 2021 car, it's now covered about 16 thousand miles so yes it's got a little bit more mileage maybe a bit of battery degradation in there but it's as close as we can get really isn't it this has also got the slightly upgraded wheel option so it's got the 19 inch uh, sport wheels with the Hankook tires on them and we're going to see here you've got to remember with all this uh, in in europe the long range went to the 82 kilowatt hour battery which i don't think we've yet got over here even now so we think this is about a 75 kilowatt hour battery on the model 3 and we think the Model Y has actually got a slightly bigger battery. I'd expect the Model Y to be a little bit less efficient than the Model 3, it's a bigger car, it's heavier. But will that extra capacity make up for the difference in real world range? We don't really know, so this is what we're gonna find out and it should be really interesting, so stick around and we're gonna have a long journey ahead of us. That's it, they're both brimmed up, both cars say charging complete and they finish within about a minute of each other, so they are equal footing. This car reads 100% 325 miles of range. This car reads 100% 327 miles of range. So slightly more on that one in theory. But as we know, you know, these are uh, fairly optimal, uh, let's say optimistic figures. And so we'll see exactly what we can get for them today. Both cars have got their tire pressures at the 42 PSI cold. And these are both heat pump cars as well, by the way. We're not gonna drive for maximum efficiency. We are just gonna drive real well at the speed limit. So not speeding, but not trying to hypermar. We're gonna drive at the speed limit as quick as we can in these slightly kind of damp conditions, a bit breezy. And um, we're gonna have heating on in the car, music on and stuff like that. So real world, it will be possible to get more miles out of these cars if you really try, but we're trying to get real world driving conditions. Let's see what we get. So there we are. Just pulling away now from uh, Solstice Park Services. So uh, we're just gonna go past Stonehenge in a minute. And we're going to head down towards Exeter on the A303. So this is the kind of prime route, London down towards Devon and Cornwall. A mixture of dual carriageways and some A roads. It's now uh, actually 10.38 in the morning. Uh, by the time we actually finished that, finished the filming, went to the toilet and got in the cars, we lost a few more minutes. So. Uh, cars are reading 11 degrees Celsius still. Um, I always mention temperature because it makes quite a big difference to electric cars. When they're warmer, usually above, I think, about 12, 13 degrees Celsius, they uh, are more efficient, the batteries are warmer, they operate better. So we're kind of on that cusp of uh, uh, the temperature difference, I think, and uh, it does feel quite chilly outside. But in here, climate control, here, I'm gonna set to 20 and a half degrees. And looks like we're hitting our traffic jam straight away. So. If it's traffic like this all the way, it's going to take a while to cover the miles, isn't it? So, okay, uh, wish us luck. Change of plan there. I was trying to head westbound just because it's a route I don't do so much down the A303, a uh, bit of scenery to see, but we're just hitting solid traffic as the road works further down. So, we're never going to cover the miles we need to do in the day. Um, especially at lower speeds, the car's just more efficient, it will go forever. So, um, Change of plan, let's head uh, east or north. I'm not quite decided yet. I'll have a look at traffic continuously. We need to keep these cars moving at, you know, kind of 70 miles an hour as much as we can. Otherwise, uh, it would just take too long. So 
we're now heading east uh, back past <laughs> the stone engines over, over there and uh, i think what we can do is kind of carry on driving until we got 50 percent of the battery and then turn around and come back the way we come um, but it's the only way to really rack up the miles and the cars are less efficient at 70 miles an hour I remember so um, it's, it's kind of like you know uh, they could do more miles if we just sat in this traffic jam going 10 miles an hour continuously I don't know if you'll be able to see but we're both on cruise control tow pilot 70 miles an hour that's now nice and empty stretch of dual carriageway and Gintz in the Model 3 is just starting to fall back a little bit so this is why these side-by-side -side tests are uh, really important because these differences in speed, it can be down to a number of factors, you know, how the car's calibrated, literally probably the amount of tyre wear the car's got. If they had brand new tyres, the slightly bigger roll-in circumference would probably, well, potentially make it the same speed. So this is why these side-by-sides are comparisons. So we know we have both travelled the same distance at the same speed in the same conditions. And what we'll do is we'll take turns to swap around as well, so there's no kind of slipstream benefits to either party or anything like that. Um, but yeah, goes to show, doesn't it? It, uh, it was just notably falling back over the course of a couple of miles. So there we go. Just spoken again. We've only covered 30 miles, but we're starting to get some interesting data already. So this is going to be a good one. Hi guys, right, we're back where we started actually. So instead of the original plan, which is kind of to just drive a big loop of about the range of the batteries, we, um, I was thinking as we were driving along, we basically drove a quarter of the distance away until we used about 25% of the car's battery, and then we drove back again. And now we're gonna swap cars. So I'm gonna be in the Model 3, Gintz will be in the Model Y, and that's just in case our driving styles affect efficiency. You never know, I mean, we're talking tiny little differences here, but maybe even the way Gintz has his bass super loud would use more energy. I don't know, but just to rule out driving style discrepancies, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to do exactly the same trip again. And each one we're swapping around halfway at the 25% use mark so that the one car is in front of the other car in case there's any slipstream advantage as well. So, time for the next half. Have you noticed something on our second lap, Gintz? Uh, so we're chatting away there and we had our exit point where we're going to exit and then turn back. So, but we've gone past it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So in theory, I don't think the next exit is for a few miles yet. So in theory... So trying to push the, to the limits now. Well, in theory, we're, you're going to run out. <laughs> it's, going to be, it's going to be tight for us to get back. Like, we were, we'd see, I'll just look to the camera. Like, we were chatting away about uh, uh, efficiency and uh, new batteries, and we'll do all these tests again when new batteries come out at some point down the line. But... In doing so, we just breeze past the exit, which is our turnaround point, which means we should get back with just a couple of percent left type of thing. However, we've missed that, and the next exit is further up. So, um, yeah, what do you reckon, Gins? <laughs> to be fair, though... Well, like, we've, been, yeah, we've been lately talking about our percentage, how much you have and I have. You have more than me. Well, yeah. Well, well, you're okay now. You've put the cars in the right moment. Well done. <laughs> I wasn't trying to stitch you up, pal. Uh, what I have found, I mean, the car's reading 16. This does seem a bit more efficient. I don't know if the Model Y is more efficient. Now, this on this second run, this is it's just better efficiency for this car by the look of it. So, I don't know. How's the Model same Y doing? Here. Yeah, same here. The car is now more efficient. It's running, uh, reading 241 hours per mile. When, what, when before was... Almost 270 to 75 for you. Okay, well, it needs to be more efficient to be able to do the second lap with more miles, isn't it? So, um... Well, yeah, I'm done for that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think you'll manage, yep. Okie dokie, let's keep that efficiency up. 16 degrees, it's dry, so we should be all right. A few inches later... Okay, we're getting near the end now. The Model Y doesn't have a vast amount left in it, so we're going to swap places. I'm going to go back in the Model Y just so I can film the process of it running out. So let's see what happens. Will it just cut out? Will it keep going? Will it go beyond zero? I'm going to try and find out. Okay, guys, I'm down to three percent of battery, which is displaying nine miles of range. So. Let's have a look. What I want to see is I'm going to put in Amesbury now as a charger, as a destination, and I want to see if it still tries to preheat the battery, even though it's short on power available and I've been driving all day. So there's two elements. One of them might say, no, I'm going to keep the energy for getting there. The other one might be that we've been driving all day, the battery's just warm enough. So it doesn't look like it. It's just going to take us straight there. 
5.5 miles to the charges, but I've still got nine miles left, so I might have to go and do a few more laps yet. Here's the first message on the screen. You're almost too far from known charging locations. Show chargers. Brings that up. Amesbury, 1.4 miles. I've got 2% of battery left. So it knows if you're kind of getting outside the radius of a charger that it knows about. But let's cancel that. I'm going to carry on. So there we have it. 0% battery. 270 miles covered since last charge. 73 kilowatt hours used. 266 watt hours per mile is the average, which is a bit less than the lifetime average for this car, 277. So, it, and, but the 277 obviously is like everything, that's commuting, cold start, school runs, all that kind of stuff. So uh, a little bit more efficient than that, which is kind of what you expect on a longer run, even though motorways aren't the most efficient place for this. The, the range actually, I thought we'd do a little bit more than this actually, but the colder weather, because it's gone back down to 13 degrees Celsius now, I think 15 Celsius is the sweet spot. That's where, you you know above that it was just more efficient and then it's just, it's just costing it a little bit i think probably because it's running some heating i still got climate on it's just starting to show a slight loss of power so this little gray bar across the top here has just come in a little bit now so it still drives absolutely fine but it won't have quite full power anymore however it's going okay so i'm just going to carry on driving i've now covered 280 miles and it's still going fine i mean to be fair when i came down this hill just now it, it flicked back up to one percent because i'd regen some energy uh, but it seems to settle down now to zero percent so the first zero percent was a 275 now it seems to be kind of settled on zero percent so uh yeah kind of 275 280 miles to that but it was still driving absolutely fine so um i'm just kind of doing laps now around the lovely amesbury end of the day already and there's Richard in front of me we always <coughs> had a five five percent difference uh, there's a Tesla fan there just waved uh, we had a five percent difference all the time I mean all the time by the end of the journey and I have four percent means he's in minus one percent we're still going so looks like you don't actually need to charge Teslas they just keep going forever Richard, why are we going so slow? What's going on? Okay, 288 miles covered. My power's getting more and more limited. So I can still drive 35, 40 miles an hour, but it is starting to get a little bit tight now. So I think I'm done with laps now. I'd love to see this get to 300 miles, but look, I'm just coming off the roundabout, 24. I'm going to floor it. That's me foot on the floor, 27, 28. So I'm going to the chargers now, mate. Uh, we don't want to be a danger on the road. So what have you got left in that yeah. one? I have 0%. Right, okay, so you're on zero as well anyway now. Okay, well, um, I hope I make it back. This is actually getting a bit tight because we're going up a hill now. Hopefully it's downhill the rest of the way. Yeah. yeah might, might be worth you following me. <laughs> right, speak to you in a yeah, minute. I'll say the hill here. I've got a warning, vehicle shutting down, pull over safely. I'm going to try and make it down the hill. <laughs> oh, here we go, this is it. 288 miles. <laughs> Oh, this is getting fun. Get a re go. Get a regen. I'm gonna get the regen. Get the regen round the roundabout. It did well. Look, oh, it's flat here. We need to get down the hill. Let's see if we can make it. I don't think it will. You know. Right, I'm going to pull in here. You go and get charged. That's it. So I think we've eaten the most out of the Model Y long range. This has gone dim. Let's turn the climate control off. Let's turn the heat seats off. Hang on, don't want that, do we? Let's turn that right off. So what was the final trip in the end? 289 miles, 76 kilowatt hours used. So 
264 words merging about 76 kilowatt hours usable but that's it so what's going to happen now is uh, Gins has got a little bit left in the model 3 but he's not far behind so to be fair he's going to go down now and uh, just get a bit of charge and then he can just tone me down to the charges that's no problem there we go what i'm going to do um, i'm just going to do things like pop the front just in case we get like a flat 12 volt as a result of waiting uh, drop a window down in case there's only kind of door lockage and that is it just wait for Gintz now so he better go and get a little bit of charge and come back and turn me back so what was interesting there it did actually die off quite quickly at the end there so i had quite a lot of spare power i mean i was even contemplating another lap i mean it's been telling me for ages i need to go and charge but it did actually that last little bit did actually uh, sort of fade off fairly quickly from half the power band down to nothing was pretty quick so yeah you have to be a little bit careful there okay so i'm gonna pull the front up and then i'm gonna get the towing eye out i reckon <laughs> how's that for testing i hope i hope you appreciate this it's now 20 past four in the afternoon myself colleague Gintz, we've got to obviously get this sorted in the back yet but now this has been good i do really recommend anybody who has got an electric car to kind of drive it to zero i mean just go around your house and state just kind of get a feel for what happens I don't think anyone could ever just suddenly die on a motorway because it warns you for ages. It gives you mileage beyond zero. It gradually loses power. So I think it's a really good experience to see exactly what it does. But for now, that's it for me. Just a waiting game for Gintz now. <laughs> well, that didn't go as planned. I'm charging, I'm okay. Richard's dead somewhere in the city. I love him here because I had, I had 0%. So Model 3 covered 293 miles. Used energy in 69 kilowatt hours and I averaged 235 watt hours per mile. 13% 180 kilowatts was went up to 240 something for a bit. And I'm gonna go now to Corp petrol station. Hopefully they have a rope so I can go rescue Richard. And yeah, there we go. That's staying to charge and I'm off to Corp. Uh, what do you think is it gonna do? Probably not. Just have a look at this scenario here. So car died, pulled over. It really didn't take long. It's only a couple of minutes and then the whole 12 volt system shut down. So remember I popped the front open. Well, that was dead handy. So let me just try and explain it. And there's a, a wonderful lady here called Hannah who I nearly need to thank from Amesbury, right? So the 12 volt system actually then completely shut down. I was sat in the car on the passenger side, so it wasn't on. And I actually had to use the emergency button to open the passenger side door. It's pouring with rain. Um, and then, we connected to the 12 volt uh, in the front bumper and that 12 volt only releases the bonnet. I already had the bonnet up, but we just tested it. The bonnet we've now got up and we now have to connect to the jump leads just under the window scuttles there to a combustion car. So I'm sure everybody who's kind of anti EV is gonna be absolutely loving this moment. Once the 12 volts boosted, we could then open the charge flap and it would accept a charge from this cable, which is running from the car across the pavement over the hedge and into this wonderful lady's house so uh, i think it's problem resolved uh, but the whole system shut down way quicker than i thought so yeah worth bearing in mind if you're getting near the end you've got a few miles left but it is going to pull over and it's shut down very quickly at the end and then the whole 12 volt system will die so if you'll get out of your car you probably won't be able to get back in it so really important to make sure you leave probably a door ajar windows down a little bit and then you can at least sit in the car while you're waiting for a breakdown service. Yeah, you want to show that the windows didn't go down completely, so you can't even shut the door. Yeah, we couldn't even shut the door. So you use the emergency button to get out, but you need, which gets you out, but then you can't close the door because this window here, it clashes with this frame. So, and you need the 12 volt system to be alive for it then to accept a charge. We got the charge flap open manually, but it wouldn't do it. It had to have power to the 12 volt to open the flap properly and accept the charge and lock it in. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to all the comments on this one. The anti-EV brigade, I know are going to be doing this, but we're our own fault. We did this for the purpose of testing. So yeah, I hope we do get a thumbs up amongst this lot. We are being silly. The car gave us so many warnings. Um, what we need to do here is just give it about five, 10 minutes on just a seven pin connection. This is like having a petrol pump straight from this house, by the way. So at least we can do that. And then I'll be able to go to the charge and charge it properly. So there we are, uh, silly fools, but it's our own fault. There we are, she's charging away again now. So that was to the extreme, wasn't it? And thanks to Hannah once again. What a wonderful lady. Um, so yeah, the 12 volt went dead really quickly. So like I say, you don't want to be out of the car. It locks itself down. You're in the rain on the hard shoulder. So don't do that. What we did there was uh, we plugged it into her three pin for about 10 minutes. The car then was alive. We can engage drive. 
we hooked up a tow rope with our Model 3 and just pulled it a couple hundred yards down the road here. You can't tow these cars with a tow rope of any distance at all, but a couple hundred metres is fine. In fact, that actually regens energy into the battery. We pulled up here with about four miles, even in pulling it just a, a few hundred metres there. So, um, charging away now, just pulled 200 kilowatts. So I'm going to try and log some of its charging time and speed. It's uh, 10 to 7 already. We just had a load to somebody as we pulled up. It's back on 98 miles already, so um, in, in probably about seven minutes it must be. What a day, huh? Okay, um, so it's very nearly finished charging now, 99%. You wouldn't normally go to such an amount at a charger. I'm doing it for the purpose of this test, of course. So um, what it did do, uh, this is a charging profile, by the way, so quite a good fast charge initially. The first bit was amazing, nearly 298 kilowatts it charged out, and then it's been tailing off very scientific i think you'll agree <laughs> okay let me give you some idea of, of charging time and then cost as well so um it went from nothing very very nearly nothing uh so by nearly us i mean like it was on obviously absolutely nothing we pulled it down the hill and so we could reverse it back in here but next to nothing uh, up to 80 percent took 30 minutes which is incredible so these are v3 superchargers uh, so 250 kilowatt capable and independent power. Uh, I've got 198 kilowatt hours at the low end and then gradually it's been tailing off as you can see from my very accurate charging curve there. And it looks like we're on track to add 76 kilowatt hours. What was added? In fact, it's very, it's 99 and a half percent odd now. It's been on 99 for a minute or two and it's added 76 kilowatt hours. So let's give you an idea of cost then. So we did 288 miles. Um, that's about the same distance as London Heathrow to Newcastle upon Tyne city centre, by the way, according to Google Maps. So that journey, if you charged at home at a the newer increased electric rate of 28 pence per kilowatt hour, uh, would be £21.28. Now, of course, you can get some cheaper overnight towers, I certainly used to be able to, and maybe you've got solar, so maybe it wouldn't cost that much, but a standard 28 pence per kilowatt hour electric tower of £21.28. This Tesla supercharger, what would that cost if you did all that from a supercharger? What would it cost to add this back in? There we are, 100% now, 76 kilowatt hours added. Don't think you can see that. Let me bring it around just to prove a point. There we go, you should be able to see that. So that's it done now. I need to unplug. But um, if you did that and pay for it off the supercharger here, this is 41 pence per kilowatt hour. That would be £31.16. So £31.16 is the most you can put in a supercharged location like this. Uh, some prices do vary, but 41 pence per kilowatt hour isn't uncommon now. Um, so that's about the most you can spend on a journey from London Heathrow to Newcastle. I hope that's been useful. What a day, eh? Um, but really interesting to test. Obviously, you know, we did that basically deliberately. We're idiots. That's what we're here for, to test that. Uh, again, that 12 volt died really quickly. So if your car, you know, you've got some miles beyond zero by the look of it, but you know, do get yourself to a charger and off the road. Cause that last little bit there, some cars just continuously tail down. It's really predictable, but that last bit gone. And then the 12 volt died. So, you know, I had left doors open stuff so I could get in, but otherwise you'd be out of your car. I'm going to call it a day. It's 7.40 in the evening now. I'm going to get home for my dinner. So thank you for watching once again. We'll see you in the next one.